Hi everyone, this is Sachu Tabava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we're going to take a look at Venus's upcoming entrance into Scorpio and some of the major aspects that Venus will make in the weeks ahead. Um, today I have a few thoughts about the general archetypal combination of Venus square Saturn, Venus opposite Uranus, both of which will be coming. Um, like I said, in the weeks ahead, I'll show you the real time clock. Um, I also have a little bit of an I Ching meditation today on the general meaning and things to watch for meaning of Venus and Scorpio and things to watch for with the upcoming aspects that should be pretty interesting. Add a little um, for you to meditate on in the weeks uh, coming up. Before I dive into that, I want to remind all of you that we are in, um, we've now opened up registration for my new courses. So I hope to um, see some of you guys in class soon. I'm just going to show you where you can find more information on my website. Uh, the new class, I, I have a new class that starts every six months. This course is my first year course in ancient astrology. Uh, you can check it out on the nightlight astrology on nightlightastrology.com and go to the first year course page. And if you scroll down, uh, you can learn all about the program. It's a one year program, 30 courses plus 12, uh, guest lectures. We also have um, probably about 10 breakout study sessions uh, outside of these classes uh, where you can get some tutoring help if you need it. We have uh, in-depth webinar discussions throughout the year um, in our group forum. Uh, all of the classes are recorded, so you can take the, the program live or follow along at your own pace. Uh, and there's um, just a ton of extra material, bonus material, homework stuff, um, ho guided homework exercises, excuse me, that you can take advantage of if you want to, optional certification tests at the end. Anyway, you can save $500 off if you use the early bird payment, you can use the payment plan, or we also have tuition assistance for people who might need it. So check it out on my website. If you guys have any questions, email me info at nightlightastrology.com. Otherwise, I hope to see some of you in class soon. All right. Well, that being said, let's pull up the real time clock and take a look at Venus's entrance into Scorpio, which is coming up very shortly. So let's go ahead right here. You can see that Venus is culminating in the final degrees of Libra right now, where Venus has been in its own domicile. Venus is also quite a ways out in front of the sun now. And that means that Venus will be preparing to turn retrograde, which doesn't happen until around the winter solstice, but Venus as the evening star uh, is going to go through quite a transformation coming up here um, by the end of the year. Now, Venus retrogrades are not completely uncommon, but I like to pay attention to what Venus is doing as Venus approaches that retrograde moment. Um, so there's a lot, a lot that we're going to be saying about Venus, not only this month, but in the next couple of months as we come to the end of the year. I can't believe it's already the end of the year. That's crazy. Um, okay, so if we take this forward to September 10th, Friday, September 10th, uh, you're going to see here's Venus uh, almost ready to enter Scorpio. Let's see exactly when it happens. So I'll give you the, sort of the exact time. Yeah, it's going to enter around, you know, five o'clock PM Eastern time in the United States here on Friday, September 10th. So just a little over a day from now, Venus enters Scorpio. Now, the reason I wanted to take a moment to talk about this transit is because of what Venus is going to do. Venus, first of all, enters the sign of its exile or sometimes called its detriment. I don't like detriment as much. It sounds kind of, um, it doesn't, first of all, it doesn't really get to the conceptual meaning of what a planet in, in the sign opposite to its own sign means, um, but also just kind of sound negative. Um, so Venus is in its exile right now, which means that Venus is in a, a territory or a home that is somehow contrary to its own nature. It'd be like if, you know, your um, you know, you, you are someone who uh, has to, like a refugee who has to flee their own country or something, and you're, you're, or you're ostracized from the church in, you know, the, the, you know, medieval England or something. The, the idea is that you're taking a planet and putting it into the sign opposite to its own, and that puts it in the territory of its natural archetypal opposite. So in this case, Venus and Taurus is at home. Venus and Scorpio, now it's in the temple of Mars which it's not that Venus and Mars can't have happy, a happy relationship or a synthesis that's really productive in, in some ways, but 
Venus is a natural contrary of Mars. And so putting it into the sign contrary to its own provides us with a kind of tension that we then have to deal with. And Venus can feel like kind of not in its home element and there, therefore we use the word exile. Um, but at any rate, this Venus dynamic is therefore going to be a little stressful for you know a, a couple of weeks. Let's take a long, let's take a look at how long Venus is going to spend in the sign of Scorpio. So if we take this forward, Venus is entering on September 10th and will uh, change signs again. Let's just make sure I got it absolutely correct. Venus changes signs into Sagittarius right about October 7th. So September 10th to October 7th, we have Venus in Scorpio. Now, that Venus and Scorpio period is also marked by a couple of aspects. One is going to be the very first one that, that the big one that Venus makes is a square to Saturn. Not surprisingly, it will then make the opposition to Uranus. Now, that is, in a sense, um, capturing the Uranus-Saturn dynamic, which has been the poster child transit of 2000. And 21. If I had to put it into a nutshell, it would be like this. Oh my gosh, a bunch of accelerated growth. No, 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 no. Cut back. <laughs> Cut back. Uh, oh my gosh, freedom. No, 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 no. Close the doors, lock everything up, stay inside. <laughs> Saturn constriction, conservative energy. Uranus can be um, very much about breaking outside of boundaries and barriers. And the, the theme of revolution versus constriction, revolution and constriction. Uh, if you want, you can go back in my archives and look at probably four or five videos, I think, that I have about the meaning of Saturn and Uranus. And it's worth revisiting because Venus is going to be activating that square again, which comes back into the picture also when Venus finally turns retrograde in December. So let's take a look at the dates. The first date of Venus's square to Saturn is going to be taking place right around September 16th and 17th. And then the opposition to Uranus, uh, which is also happening as Mercury is squaring Pluto um, and getting ready to turn retrograde. By the way, Mercury is in Venus's sign. That opposition will happen around September 22nd and 23rd. So between now and the next two weeks, you're going to see some real fireworks from Venus. That's the, that's the basic idea here. Okay, but what does all of that mean? What, what should we take from all of this? Well, first of all, let's talk about the complications of Venus and Mars's sign. When Venus is in Scorpio or when Venus is in Aries, although there, there are some differences, but um, you're essentially dealing with the, the needs of Venus, it's like if Venus was coming to your house and your, let's say your Scorpio, your house is Scorpio and Venus is coming over saying, you know, like, well, what, what do you like to do Venus? You know, Venus is like, um, well, I'd like to, um, you know, maybe we could do some watercolors tonight. <laughs> like We could paint our nails or maybe we could make love, or maybe we could watch a really good art film, or maybe we could, um, you know, just have a really lovely conversation. Uh, maybe there'd be a nice smelling candle and maybe there'd be a beautiful like, like meal that you make or something like that. So Venus is about enjoyment and pleasure, easy, harmonious, pleasant things and, um, and, and, and love and desire, but not, uh, and, and so to a certain degree passion, um, but, you know, but it's comfortable and it's harmonious you know, if you think of Venus, it's a little bit like a Beach Boys song, you know, with all the like the, all the harmonies going on. There's kind of a, a feel good vibe. Venus, I don't mean to simplify Venus, but you just keep it simple sometimes to understand how dignities work. It can be really, really helpful. So imagine now that um, you have Venus coming over and your house is Scorpio. You're like, well, and oh, well, that's nice that you like to do that, Venus. But around here, we have a different agenda, you know, <laughs> you know. We like to talk about dark, heavy, deep, intense things. We don't like things that are inauthentic. So if you're thinking about, you know, doing some watercolors of, uh, of you know, a, a pleasant, uh, like a, like a pleasant nature scene, it better, you know, you, you better include the fact that there's things killing each other out there in nature. You know, it's like, 
like Scorpio is a sign, a Mars ruled sign that wants to deal with um, depth and intensity. Uh, it wants to confront and work through and, and grapple with the darker themes of the human psyche, of life, um, of suffering, of death, of darkness, of decay. Um, it wants to protect against them, or it wants to meet them and uh, by meeting them be transformed. So these, you know, in more intense scorpionic themes now have to, this is all we have in the cupboards at house Scorpio to give you for, you know, for dinner, Venus. So Venus suddenly has to um, take on and deal with and work, work it, her desires, so to speak, through the, um, through the available resources of the Mars ruled uh, sign of the scorpion. Now that, so that tension is going to be apparent. You're trying to keep the peace, but there's war in the air. You're trying to keep the peace, but there's a deeper libidinal instinctual power and, and like, like lurking, you know, volcano it's, it's ready to blow. It's, there's, there's powers of the unconscious that want to surge up and, and, uh, you know, you know, act as an agent of change. Well, that's not necessarily like Venus's cup of tea. It's not that Venus can't find a way. I mean, for example, people who make um, dark things beautiful or people who find an erotic beauty or people who are able to hold the tension of war and beauty or something like that. So it's not impossible. But for a lot of us, these qualities feel like opposites that are, you know, in our, at least in our heads, they can, it can feel sort of irreconcilable, especially when you're in the pressure of the moment with someone that you love and there's serious conflicts of value or interest, or, you know, uh, you're trying to keep the peace in different relationships in your life or in the workplace, but there's different agendas, different personalities, different moods. Um, you know, if you, if you're like, Hey, look, I'm just, I'm just here to kind of you know, relax a little bit and, uh, you know, try to enjoy myself at the end of the day. And someone is, you know, wanting to go right into talking about politics. Like these are the kinds of everyday tensions that Venus and, uh, in the sign of Scorpio will amplify. So we have to be on the lookout for this. Now, the other thing of course, is that these, th there is a need for Venus to take a walk on the wild side for Venus to be to visit the edgier dimensions of her own nature, so to speak. So there's something here that might present us with an opportunity as well to explore desire, to explore conflict. Um, there is a book and I've, I've read from it many times before on my channel called a terrible love of war. And it's talking about, you know, why war exists in creation, especially since, you know, the, the ancient, um, you know, the, the, the ancient philosophy surrounding astrology began with this, um, you know, I, I began with the idea of a cosmic harmonia, which means that all forces and all, all experiences and all archetypes have their place in the beautiful, just true, you know, infinite divinity of, of, um, of the cosmos. So everything in cosmos, right? The word cosmos is it's etymologically associated with the word cosmetic, which means everything in its right place is association with beauty and making sure everything is well-placed. So Venus's challenge in Scorpio is also where is the, how to um, properly place, and you can hear me trying to properly place the words, how to properly place the difficult or edgier qualities of Mars into a picture that um, can still retain some degree of, of, of harmony or balance or agreement. That's a tricky thing to figure out. And so we'll be faced with that over the next coming weeks. And then we hit a square to Saturn where things can get more severe and rigid and questions about who's in and who's out. Um, and uh, issues of polarization. Saturn is a planet that's very polarizing. It was the planet that ruled oppositions in ancient astrology. So Saturn, Venus is going to go through a square with Saturn, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, insiders and outsiders, things that are 
in inside the city walls and accepted versus those things that are cast out in love and relationships and so forth. For example, Venus and Scorpio square Saturn can be the idea that a very common, you know, stereotypical idea that's done a lot of damage, which is that, oh, you know, a woman should never get angry or a woman shouldn't express like uh, rage because then um, there's something, oh, that she's, um, she's imbalanced. She's hysterical, you know, this kind of thing. So Venus square Saturn, you, you know, what, how will, how will the feminine sort of principle and not literally connected, of course, to sex or gender, but how will that sort of feminine archetype connect with a God that almost always wants to divide things between what's on one side of a boundary or division or barrier and what's on the other side. That'll be interesting. And then Venus goes through an opposition with Uranus, just as Mercury is squaring Pluto. The Venus opposite Uranus is about revolution, independence, uh, originality, inventiveness, um, the need to break free from things that are constraining or confining. Well, for Venus, who's trying to keep the peace and create harmony, that's also a challenge. So Venus is going to you know, have a little bit of a gauntlet to run here in the next couple of weeks, the next two weeks in particular. Um, I start with a few basic things that help me. One is, you know, um, a, a simple phrase is, do I care more about this person as a soul or do I care more about being right? That's an easy one for Venusian tension, Venus and Aries, Venus and Scorpio. Do I care more about the soul in front of me or that I'm relating to, or do I care more about being right? It's not that, um, you know, we have to um, toss away our convictions or our principles in order to care for another person that has serious disagreements with us. Um, so, Sometimes the question with you know Venus and Aries or Venus and Scorpio is how do I how do I sacrifice something of my stake in the situation, at least on the level of my ego, without abandoning my principles when there's real differences, but there's also a need for me to care for the soul of another person. Another one that comes to mind is um, you know, are my you know, is my idea of the perfect picture starting to be too dominant or asserting itself too much. You know, it's like you go, like, I'm just reminded of like, you know, going on vacation with my kids, my wife and stuff like that. And you're in this situation where it's like, everyone's like, we're all on the, we're all on the peace train right now, but everyone has a very specific idea of what this happy little journey is supposed to look like. So, you know, subtly people start like sharpening their daggers, you know, like, like where no one else can see. It's like, well, my idea of this freaking awesome vacation, you know, <laughs> before you know it, you know, everyone's uh, giving murder eyes. And so this kind of thing too, right. Where it's like, what am, is my idea of the good time or my idea of beauty, fun, peace, enjoyment, relaxation, starting to subtly dominate or is it uh, am i trying to dominate others on some subtle level in order to get what i want or in order to have the experience that i think is most desirable venus in in scorpio can get a little um, obsessive about the object of its desire it can become also a little um controlling and um uh, um Passive aggressive isn't quite the right word, Manip manipulative and dominant, domineering uh, toward its idea of the good. So those are things to just be aware of as well. I did an I Ching reading asking about Venus going into Scorpio and these upcoming aspects. And I thought the, the reading was really super um, helpful. So there was a few things that came back and uh, I just want to tell you about them really quick. So the, the hexagram that came back was um, number... 61. Uh, 61 is sometimes called inner truth. And one of the images that's often associated with this, um, with this hexagram in particular is a bird with its claws uh, clutching an egg. And the egg is its own and the egg needs to hatch. But uh, the nest isn't there. And so it has to use its claws to hatch the egg. It's a funny, a funny image. And, um, 
if if it's if it squeezes with the the claws could break the egg open and basically um you could it could it could um that would that would of course end in tragedy so on the other hand if the grasp is so you can't grasp too hard too strong on the other hand if the grasp is too light the egg will be dropped it'll fall from the sky and that will result in tragedy as well i thought it was interesting by the way that this image would come up in the eijing considering all of the um everything that's swirling in the news about um the, the topic of abortion right now just as the side note so but regardless this image is uh far more universal than than just that topic um so if you're clutching on to something too tightly, let's call this the object of our desire with Venus and Scorpio, and you're holding too tightly, being obsessive, controlling, rigid, um, demanding. Uh, and remember, this is the object of your desire. This is something that you actually care about, that you love, that you want to care for, or that you're attracted to somehow. If you clutch, cling too tightly, You'll you'll break it. You'll you'll damage what you love. Okay, that's a good teaching. On the other hand, if there if you don't hold on, the image also tells us that if you don't hold on tightly enough, if there's not any pressure whatsoever, you'll drop it, and it'll fall, and you'll also lose the thing that you love. So this this image is interesting because it's kind of telling us, like like you have to find just the right amount of pressure when holding on to or cultivating or relating to the things or people that you really love or want or desire too loose. You'll let it go too hard. You'll kill it. Uh, so right in the middle, there, there's a gentle firmness, a gentle firmness, a lot like a yoga posture. Many yoga postures we talk about finding a place that's not, too rigid, but not too relaxed. So there's some kind of posture that we're trying to find that's relaxed, but firm in relation to the things and people that we love, that we are trying to maintain peace or balance with the things we desire, the outcomes we're attracted to, um, can't, can't be too, uh, harsh or obsessive or pointed, um, or, or, or rough, but we also uh, can't be too lax. There's something here that might be not worth fighting for, but worth working toward and applying a little bit of pressure toward or having to um, hold, hold onto and not lose sight of. There's a changing line in hexagram 61 that I really like, which is, um, here we go, number four. And... Um, this is just a commentary on the image and then a little, um, a little explanation of the line. It says the necessity of horse mating and reproduction has gone signifying turning down one's fellow yet sustaining the one above. It's an interesting line. I'll try to explain it by reading the follow-up commentary. There is no need to expand credibility rather seek its optimal expression. So in a sense, this first line is saying there's no need to try to expand our reputation or expand the degree to which someone trusts or believes in us or finds us to be like valuable or beautiful. Like don't, don't try to prove yourself or your worth. Oh, don't try to overextend yourself in proving your worth or credibility to others, but rather seek the optimal expression of um, the credibility that you already have. Um, for example, if you think about this in regard to dating someone, Venus and Scorpio advice here through this line would be like, don't overly, don't, don't overly extend yourself trying to prove that you're like a valuable or worthy mate or partner for someone else. Rather, um, just seek to be yourself and let your let what's already there incredible and worthy about you speak. Let it just be what it is. Don't try to convince. Don't try to, don't try to prove um, because it's something that you want and you might overreach trying to say, no, I'm really worthy of this thing. So be careful of that. 
The target must be firmly maintained. The interference of a secondary target also always exists, but one must be single-minded and stick to one's original intent. That's interesting. It's also a line that's teaching us that we should stay focused on the, let's say, the object of our desire or an original uh, sincere intention and not be distracted by things that come up in the meantime to potentially sort of take us off course. Or, you know, sometimes it's like you're, when you're doing well on, on route to, let's say, you know, um, I don't know, let's say you want to be the manager of, of, um, of a business or something, you're, you're working your way up and you, you know, you get, you get uh, a, a pay, you get a pay increase. You know that your long-term financial goals and professional goals you have not reached yet, but you start thinking to yourself, well, you know, I'm kind of, I've kind of arrived. I'm kind of something, I'm something hot and I'm on my way. So you start spending frivolously. You start acting as though you've already achieved the next pay grade up or the next, the next uh, position up, even though you haven't yet, you start, um, you start, uh, acting bigger, too big for your britches at work. You start overspending, et cetera. You were on a trajectory by your own merit and your own intentions and your own work ethic that would take you where you want to go because of a kind of restlessness and an inability to just stay focused on the prize. You spread your energies out in too many different directions too quickly. So you have to be careful of this with Venus in a Mars ruled sign, even sometimes Mars in a Venus ruled sign. The reason for that being that sometimes there's going to be um, a, a way in which you your you know impulse control becomes problematic in relation to what you desire or what you want or what your goals are. Um, there will be no fault or calamity if one has no excessive desire for more and seeks just what is wanted. See, that's a good, that's a really good teaching. So those are some really good, you know, kind of nuanced, specific pieces of advice about Venus entering Scorpio. I know I'm going to keep them in mind. I hope you guys find them useful. Um, I'm going to end it here. If you guys uh, have stories to share, use the hashtag grabbed, put hashtag grabbed, and then put the aspect Venus and Scorpio or Venus square Saturn or whatever it is we're talking about, any aspect that you want to share. Leave a little story. Try to keep your story you know, within a couple of sentences, a very brief paragraph, because those are the easiest to read and share You know, when I do my episodes um, where I share your stories with everyone. Um, but I was, it doesn't matter if you want to leave a longer one just to read. I love reading them. It's so interesting to see, you know, what everybody's going through. Um, I hope you guys are having a good week. Uh, tomorrow we're going to start, I think we're going to start in on the sun moving into its opposition with Neptune, which will be happening at the beginning of next week. And so we might get a preview of that tomorrow a little bit for today. I hope that this Venus entering Scorpio video was interesting. If you have Venus and Scorpio too, uh, use the comment section below. Tell us what it's like to have Venus and Scorpio. What are the lessons that you've learned as a Venus and Scorpio type of person? Um, also, uh, don't forget again, my new class, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystics, starts November 13th. We'd love to see you guys there. You can check it out on my website, nightlightastrology.com. Go to the first year course page and you can learn all about it. Feel free to email us with questions, info at nightlightastrology.com. All right, that's what I've got for today. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye.